Hello, this is Wendy Lightheart, and for this lesson we are going to learn how to solve linear inequalities. Let's start by looking at some linear inequalities. The first one is read, x is less than 5. Its English interpretation is the set of all real numbers that are strictly less than 5. This means that any real number in that set makes this inequality a true statement. The next one reads, x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Its in English interpretation is the set of all real numbers that are either greater than negative 2 or equal to negative 2. Notice that a line under the less than or greater than sign indicates that the number itself is included in that set. Now let's look at how these inequalities can be graphed on a real number line. We will also look at how to write the interval notation for each inequality. Recall that the first inequality says that x is any real number strictly less than 5. We show this with an arrow pointing from 5 toward all numbers less than 5, which are the numbers to the left of 5. Since 5 is not included in this set, we put a parenthesis at 5. You can think of it as getting really close to 5, but never actually reaching 5 as the parenthesis curves away from 5. The interval notation for this set follows naturally from its graph. You can think of it as naming the range of numbers the set includes. Since it points to the left, we say it goes from negative infinity to 5, but not including 5. This is how to notate that with interval notation. We list the left endpoint first, which is in this case is negative infinity, and list the right endpoint next, separating the endpoints with a comma. Note that infinity and negative infinity are not actual numbers, so we will always use parentheses next to the infinity symbols. However, the grouping symbol we use next to an endpoint that is an actual number, like 5, will depend on whether or not the number is included in the set. If it is not included in the set, we use a parenthesis next to that number. In the next example, we will see what to use when the number is to be included in the set. Recall that the next inequality is the set of all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 2. Thus, the graph will have an arrow that indicates just that. Notice that the arrow starts at negative 2 and then points to all numbers greater than negative 2. A square bracket is placed at negative 2 to indicate that this number is included in the set. This is the same symbol we will use in the interval notation. Note that this notation says that negative 2 is the left endpoint of this set and it is included in the set. Then the right endpoint is infinity. And remember, we always use a parenthesis next to infinity. The nice thing about solving inequalities is that it includes the same steps that we use to solve linear equations, with only one exception. And that is, whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must flip the direction of the inequality sign so let's solve some inequalities. Remember that the first step to solving a linear equation is to simplify both sides. And that's going to be the same for solving linear inequalities. Thus the first thing we need to do here is to distribute the negative 8 to get rid of the parentheses. Then we need to combine like terms. Once both sides are simplified, we collect the variable terms to one side and the constant terms to the other. 
So we can move the constant terms to the left by subtracting 28 from both sides. Now we have just one more step to isolate the x, and that is to divide both sides by 8. Notice that we haven't multiplied or divided both sides by a negative number yet, so we do not need to flip the direction of the sign. Simplifying both sides, we obtain our solution that reads negative 1 is less than or equal to x. Or in other words, x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Next, we'll graph and write the interval notation for this solution set. As you can see, the arrow starts at negative 1 and includes negative 1 with the bracket. Then it points to all numbers greater than negative 1. Thus, our interval is from and including negative 1 to positive infinity. Let's look at a fun one with fractions. Remember that we can clear the fractions by multiplying every turn on both sides by the least common denominator, which is 6 in this case. So we multiply each term by 6, then we simplify each term. And notice that the fractions have been eliminated. Also notice that both sides are simplified completely, so we're ready to collect variable terms to one side and constant terms to the other. Let's say we move the variable terms to the left. We can do that by subtracting 3x from both sides. Now we must move the constants to the right, and we can do that by subtracting 15 from both sides. Notice that we almost have x isolated but we're still going to have to get rid of that negative sign. Let's continue this on the next slide. To get rid of a negative sign on a variable, remember, we can divide both sides by negative 1. However, whenever we multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, we must flip the sign so the greater than or equal to sign will be flipped to become a less than or equal to sign. And the division gives us our solution of x is less than or equal to negative 3. Let's graph and write the interval notation for this solution set. So think of what kind of symbol will be placed at negative 3 and which direction the arrow will be pointing. If you pictured a bracket at negative 3 and an arrow pointing to the left of negative 3, then you're right. The left endpoint then is negative infinity and the right endpoint is negative 3 and we use a bracket because we are including negative 3 in that set. This is the interval notation for this solution set. Okay, let's try one more example. For this one, we need to use the distributive property on one side to simplify and combine like terms on the other side to simplify. So we'll distribute the 3 to get 3x plus 3 on the left and combine like terms to get 3x plus 7 on the right. Now that both sides are simplified, we need to collect variable terms to one side and constants to the other. Let's say we move the variable terms to the left, so we can do that by subtracting 3x from both sides. Notice that the variables will cancel out on both sides. 
Whenever this happens, just like with equations, if the remaining statement is false, then there is no solution. Thus, this inequality has no solution because 3 is not greater than 7. On the other hand, if the variable terms cancel out and the remaining statement is true, then the solution set is all real numbers. Well, that's it for today. Hopefully, you've become proficient enough at solving linear equations. The solving linear inequalities, that is, will be a piece of cake.